Welcome to Fanatics Live, where we virtually connect you with your favorite stars and athletes right at home. Tonight, we will be meeting with fans, signing autographs, and engaging in live Q&A. Now, let's welcome our host. Well, hey guys, and welcome in to another episode of Fanatics Live. My name is Kelsey, and I am going to be your host today, bringing your favorite athletes to you right at home. Now, before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know that tonight's show is brought to you by the Fan Cash Rewards Card by Fanatics. So, as a member of Fan Cash Rewards Card holder, you're going to receive benefits and perks, including access to unforgettable experiences with athletes like this, earn 6%. Fan cash on every purchase, exclusive deals, offers, and so much more. Now, today's guest is someone we all probably know. He's why you might get a little bit excited when you hear the song Crazy Chain. He is a Hall of Famer. He's a World Series champion. He's an eight-time NL MVP, Silver Slugger, MLB batting champion. Of course, I'm talking about the switch hitter. I'm talking about number 10. I am talking about Chipper Jones. So let's bring on Chipper and get the show started. Hey, Chipper, how are you? Hey, how are you, Kels? Good to see you. Good to see you, my man. Now, I know that I've worked with you. I've been around you for quite some time now, and we check in often, but catch the viewers up on how you're doing because man you got a lot you got a lot going on right now you've had a lot going on the last few years obviously cooperstown was a little bit ago you're a color you work color analyst now you're an assistant coach not to mention a father a husband mm -hmm. you got all this stuff going on so how are you juggling it all and what does life look like for you nowadays well you know we're, we're good men are only as good as as that pretty blonde that's in the background rolling her eyes at me. And you know? she's pretty. Um, she, <laughs> she allows me to do an awful lot. And uh, yes, we are very busy. Obviously, if I could show you the amount of <laughs> memorabilia sitting <laughs> behind this little camera right here, uh, you'd be amazed. But yes, the TV show, um, spent a month down in spring training with the Braves mm -hmm. uh, as hitting consultants and can't wait for the season to get started tomorrow. Um, yeah. So yeah. Pretty crazy around here, but I uh, wouldn't have it any other way. Seven boys running around here at one point or another. It's always chaos around the Jones household. Not just running around. You got all those bikes in there. You got all those cars, <laughs> man. That's that's a fun place over there. Now, we have uh, fans that are excited to meet you, and they have some questions that they want to ask you. So we're going to start off this meet and greet, if you're okay with it. And yep. uh, we're going to start out with Nick. Now, Nick is calling in from Washington and your electric bat always made you a must see and made the game so much fun for Nick. And he said his favorite brave stadium is Turner field. So we're going to bring in Nick and let him ask his question. How you doing Chipper? Nick, how's it going buddy? It's good, man. It's good. All yeah. right. So the question I have for you today is I know you're a golfer. Um, would like to know who is the best golfer between you, Smoltzy, Maddox and Glavin, and then who thinks they're the best golfer? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I am probably the most improved. I know that wasn't your question. Uh, those guys, they played so much. Like if it five man rotation, whoever was pitching that particular day, the other four went out and played golf every day, you know, and us, uh, us, position players we we kind of had to get our rest and, and miss out on the golf john smoltz is definitely the best golfer uh he knows it uh he will let everyone else know it um all you have to do is ask him he will tell you uh we played the other day and i actually played pretty well i shot 74 and uh he shot a he shot 68 so he's uh he's quite a bit better than those other guys too i love it that's awesome thank yeah. you yeah well, no problem and now, Nick, you're about to get a signed baseball from Chipper. Where are you getting put on it? Hall of Fame 18? Yeah, I think the, the Hall of Fame inscription, uh, that, that one's the coolest to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you can see I'm signing it right there for you, and you'll be getting that soon from us. Look at him go. Actually legible, too, huh? <laughs> Proud of you, Chipper. There we go. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a great day. My pleasure. Take Thank you easy. so much, Nick. 
All righty, Chipper. Now we are going to bring in Tyler. He's calling in from South Carolina, and he says that he will never forget the day that he got your rookie card when he was younger. He said that you have always been his favorite, and he says that the history of Turner Field can't be beaten, but he loves Truist Park. So we are going to bring Tyler in for his question now. Hey, Chipper, how you doing? Tyler, how's it going, buddy? Uh, it's going great. Uh, so yeah. my question is uh, real simple. Uh, I'm a big card collector. Um, one of my favorite cards is has you and Andrew and Smoltzy on it. Uh, right. But if it, were, if it were up to you, um, who would be one guy that you could uh, sign with uh, on a baseball card? You know, uh, it, it's always great when you're when you're paired with your your brothers. You know, the fellow Braves. I've been fortunate enough to to be on a card with Murph, who was one of my favorites growing up. Um, Hank Aaron, who obviously is on the Mount Rushmore of Atlanta sports and whatnot. So um, I think if other than those uh, obvious ones, I would probably have to say there'd be three guys really I'd love. I came up as a shortstop. So I loved watching Cal Ripken, Ozzy Smith and Barry Larkin. So if they could somehow work that quartet out, that would be uh, I would definitely have to, you know, grab that card, have it all, have them all get, you know, sign it. And I would definitely go in the scrapbook. Awesome. I love it. Also, Acuna or Soto? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I'm a Braves consultant. I better say Acuna. Huh? <laughs> oh, Tyler, that was a good one. That was a good one, my man. But you can't catch guard so uh he, he's signing that ball for you now but you have a pretty big card collection oh yeah huge uh, you see andrew over the shoulder right there mm -hmm. and um and ton of chipper stuff ton of andrew stuff those are my guys growing up so those are the guys right the guys, yes <laughs> <laughs> well there's there your you ball. go tyler uh thank you very much chipper thank you all right buddy thank you so much tyler all righty, now we are going to bring in Jimmy. He's calling in from Kentucky. Even though he's calling in from Kentucky in true Atlanta fashion, he says if he had a walk-up song, it would be Anything by Outkast. And he said that his favorite Braves memories were those versus the Mets and the fact that they had to pay you rent because you owned <laughs> Shea Stadium. <laughs> so we like Jimmy already. So let's bring in Jimmy. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, how are you doing? Jimmy, that's a good one. I like you. I like you already, buddy. Hey, man, you're right down my alley. So question for you. It's, it's If you had this opportunity that we have where you get 90 seconds with somebody that has changed baseball history or was great for you or that you looked up to in the game, who would you pick and what would you ask them? Living or dead, doesn't matter. Well, um, you know, I grew up in the shadow of Mickey Mantle, my dad telling me, you know, so often stories about about the Mick and whatnot and, you know, becoming a switch hitter and, and being mentioned in the same breath with him and and Eddie Murray, you know, before I was done playing. Uh, it would be an awful nice thrill to be able to sit down with them and, and have a conversation Um I think I would ask him pretty much the same thing that, that I get asked on a daily basis. Would I rather walk up to the play left-handed or right-handed? Would I, ra you know, who would I rather face? You know, who were the toughest pitchers he ever faced? Right. I did get a, I did get a chance to meet Mickey once uh, in 1992 at a card show, oddly enough, a card signing. We're all card and, <laughs> right. And um, uh, just really didn't get a chance to interact with him much other than to, to ask him a question here or there and people were coming up crying and fawning over him. And I just asked him, I said, does this get, you know, do you get sick of this? Does it get old? And he told me, you know, the, one of the funniest stories, you know, a story that I told at my, my hall of fame speech, um, where he, you know, walked up to the pearly gates and God looked him up and down, like he wasn't going to let him in. And finally he said, Mick, I'm going to let you in, but will you sign these dozen baseballs first? You know? So it was just like, Everybody kind of always, you know, wanting something from and I've uh, kind of learned through the years that it's, you know, that's the that's the price of playing on TV every single day. Absolutely. Well, thank you for making all my interactions with Mets fans for the rest of my life. Wonderful. <laughs> my pleasure, Jimmy.
<laughs> yeah, he liked you already with that with that fun fact about you, Jimmy. Is the ball going to go up behind you where you have all that other memorabilia? A hundred percent, absolutely. We're standing. We're actually in my card shop right now, and people are kind of listening. But it's it's uh -huh. going right here. Well, there, there it is. Go, thank you, my brother. You're the best. All I right. appreciate it. No problem, Jimmy. Thank you so much. All righty, Chipper. We're still going. We're still going. We're going to bring Zach now. He's calling in from Connecticut, and he says that being a father to his son and watching him grow has been the coolest and best accomplishment yet in life. I'm sure you can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And he also says that the playoff run in 1995 is what sealed the deal for him on being a Chipper fan. He said it was like watching someone become a star right in front of his eyes. So let's bring in Zach for his question now. Hey, Chip, how are you doing, man? Zach, how's it going? Awesome. Awesome, buddy. Thanks for doing this, by the way. Yeah, no problem. My question I always wanted to know, well, actually more recent, now that you're becoming a, uh, a consultant and a coach, how was it in the locker room for you going in as a coach compared to when you were there as a player? It certainly helps that there are still some some – uh, people that I played with in the clubhouse. I think if I was walking into a, you know, a strictly new clubhouse where guys, you know, didn't know anything about me or hadn't played with me, things may be different. Um, you know, I have, thanks to, you know, Freddie, uh, I have instant credibility when I walk in there. Obviously, I have the pedigree. I did it for a long time. Um, but I think guys are more scared to come up to you, um, and not know how you're going to react. You know, I mean, I think sometimes, and, and I can relate because when Hank Aaron walked into our clubhouse, he was up on such a pedestal that I didn't want to go mess with him and take up any of his time and whatnot. If, if he can, you know, if he can, I, I would certainly go up and give him the respect of shaking his hand and saying, nice to see you, but I'm not going to take up any of his time. And I feel like a lot of the guys are the same way. And, and it take, it took me having a, you know, a little sit down with all the guys in spring training, getting them together and say, hey, look, you know, I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. You know, I, I, I've got a wealth of knowledge that I would love to share with you guys about mechanics and approach and execution and all that kind of stuff. There are some things that I see on TV that I can, you know, help you with by all means, you know, but let's talk, you know, and and I think after that, that kind of broke the ice and, and guys were more receptive and quick to, to come up and ask questions about, you know, specs on my back. You know, what are you looking for ahead in the count? What are you looking for behind an account? All these things go into the mental preparation of each and every AB in, in the major leagues. Thanks, man. I love it, Chipper. And by the way, yeah. even in the shadow of New York, thanks for being a uh, Mets killer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was my pleasure. I think we're all excited to see Chipper back in the – the dugout, Zach. It is going to be cool. So he's signing your ball now. It looks like you're getting Brave for Life put on yours. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I got yeah. the Hall of Fame one, so I wanted to add that one to the collection. There you go. Well, he's getting that done for you right now, and I'm sure you have a great spot for it because behind you, it looks like you have quite the setup. A little bit. There you go. Thanks, Chipper. I appreciate it, man. Have a good day. All right, Zach. Take it easy. Thank you, Zach. All righty. So now it is Jason's turn. He's calling in from Kentucky. Now he says his favorite Brave Stadium is the Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. We're going to have to change this though, because he says it's the only place he's ever seen a major league game. Wow. Uh, and he said that he became a chipper fan watching persevere through your knee injury in 94 and leading the Braves to the series win in 95. So let's go ahead and bring in Jason. Hey, Chipper. Jason, how are you? I'm good, sir. Uh, as a Northwest Georgia kid growing up and a lifelong Braves fan, this is a pleasure. Absolute pleasure to meet you. Well, thanks for coming on with us. Appreciate it. Sure. Uh, yeah, basically my question was I wanted to know, you know, having been able to spend your entire career with the Braves in one organization, wear that uniform the entire time, what does that mean to you? Well, it means everything. Um you know, I'm a Southern kid. Uh, I'm a small town Southern kid. Um, Atlanta is, is my speed. Not that Atlanta is small, but it's, you know, uh, relatively speaking, compared to the Chicago's and Los Angeles's and New York's, um, you know, Atlanta is a smaller, slower town. And, you know, I couldn't really couldn't have asked for 
anything else from a consistency standpoint because Bobby Cox was there for 17 years. John right. Sherholz was there for, you know, 19 years. I mean, it, it was just, it's nice to be able to come to work and know how everything's going to go on a daily basis. And the Braves, you know, every year coming out of spring training, we had an opportunity to go to the playoffs and, and compete for a world championship. And I don't know what else you can ask for as a player, you know, and I think once, you know, I rooted my family here in the Atlanta area. I really didn't want to uproot them. You know, I, I wanted to do everything I could to, to stay here and make sure that, you know, <laughs> the way Bobby Cox and John Sherholz were consistent for me, I wanted to be that consistent um, uh, force here at, at home and, and make sure that nothing was going to change. So I was very fortunate. It was a good marriage between – uh, myself and the Atlanta Braves and, and the higher ups in the organization and, and we made it work and I couldn't be more thankful. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Chipper. No problem, Jason. All righty. So now you're getting your ball signed too. Where are you going to put it, Jason? Uh, I've actually got some stuff over here. I can't really say it very well, but I'm a big car collector, member very collector, mostly brave stuff. So it's going to go right in the middle of it. Hey, brave stuff is the best stuff, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you'll get that in the mail soon. Really cool. There it is. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. There we go. No problem, Jason. You take it easy. Yep. Thank you so much, Jason. All right, Chipper. Now we're going to bring in Larry, who's calling from Marietta, Georgia. Uh, Atlanta guy, oh. like us. Hey. Uh, his walk-up song would be Jack and Diane. And he said it is so easy to be a chipper fan with the batting average that never seemed to go down. So we like Larry too. Let's bring in Larry. What's up, Chipper? How you doing? Larry. How you Larry. doing? Larry. Got something in common. Got something in common. <laughs> there you go. Calling from the baseball mecca of the universe of East Cobb. I don't care what anyone says, best baseball in the world. Um, my question would be from your time when you first started in the minor leagues. How has it changed to like the modern era? Like what's the difference you've seen from the nineties until the twenties? Well, uh, you know, COVID aside where we've lost so many, uh, you know, lower um, minor league franchises over the last couple of years, because they haven't been able to keep their head above water. That's the same number one, first and foremost. But the biggest thing is that they are rushing guys to the big leagues now um they used to back in the back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s they used to let us you know marinate down there and and really um experience some success um spend a year at each level get that um experience that we would need so that when we got to the big leagues uh you know we would step into the whatever shoes we were you know replacing and not skip a beat now they're trying to rush them to the big leagues. I think they're they're really seeing talent, whether it's on the mound or in the batter's box. And, hey, listen, if they can hit 100 miles an hour, get them to the big leagues. If they can be consistent, get them to the big leagues. If they can throw strikes and get them, uh, get people out, um, get them to the big leagues, you know. And um, that's the one big difference I see. It's the one big difference I see in, in some of the coaching decisions you know, behind the scenes, whereas, you know, it would have been, you know, 20, 25 years ago it would have been, hey, let's send this kid back down to the minors for a little more seasoning. He's pretty close, but he needs some more seasoning. Now, uh, if he shows that he can play at the at the big league level even a little bit, they're, they're going to give him a shot. Nice, nice. All righty. Now he's going to sign the ball for you, Larry. Pretty cool. Well, you got Chipper Jones saying, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, you'll hold batting, on. Yeah, what are you getting? Champ, batting uh, champ, oh, batting champion. Got to. Got yes, to. sir. Batting champ 08. Yes. Always okay. one of my favorite inscriptions. It's one of the coolest by far. Very cool. Very cool. There you go, my friend. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate your time. All right, Larry. Take it easy. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Larry. All righty, now we got our final one, Chipper. This is Kevin. He is a fan cash rewards card holder. He's calling in from Virginia. And as a Mets fan, 
He grew up watching that's, that's you right. destroy his favorite team. <laughs> and he says that you're one of the best all around players to ever do it. So let's bring in Kevin. Hey, Chipper, how you doing? Kevin, buddy, I apologize, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> anytime you can get a compliment from a Mets fan, that's one of the highest compliments I can receive. So thanks for coming on with us today. Yeah. No problem. It was actually supposed to be me and my wife, Sarah. She's a diehard Braves fan, but the scheduling just didn't work out. Uh, um, but what I wanted to know was, who is your favorite Mets pitcher to face during those 20 <laughs> years of destroying us? Oh, man. Um, let's see. There was the uh, Rick Reed, who was uh, – he threw game one against us in the big series in Atlanta. Um, really good, tough pitcher. Um, kind of a poor man's Maddox, I guess you could say. Could sink the ball and cut the ball on both sides of the plate. Uh, really good curveball. Um, he's a tough guy to face. Had a little bit of success off him. The the Pelfries, the John Maines. Um, even how about this? So I faced uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes' dad in a Mets uniform. All right, back in the day, and and uh, faced him quite a few times. So. Look, you know, we had so many knockdown drag outs with the Mets, so many good games, some of my most memorable games um, that I played in in my career were in Shea Stadium and games that we didn't even win. You know, um, the first game after 9-11, I'll never forget, you know, the, the ball that Mike Piazza hit off Steve Carse to win the game in the bottom of the eighth. Uh, Robin Ventura's grand slam single, in uh in the 99 uh lcs i mean just some some epic games that uh that i'll treasure for a lifetime and um you know the mets were the closest thing to a a, a rivalry that that i ever experienced and it was one heck of a rivalry there for a few years yeah, it sure was i appreciate you, you uh, answering my question even though i'm a mets yeah. <laughs> and tell, tell tell sarah i miss her and i said hello okay okay we'll do all right Cool. Oh, we wish Sarah could be here, but Kevin, thank you. And, and you were invited to the show is just one of the perks for being a fan cash rewards card holder. So thank you so much for joining us. We hope this was yeah. an experience that you're always going to remember. You're going to get your signed baseball. What are you getting put on it? Hall of Fame 18. And for you guys listening, uh, make sure you stay tuned because we have plenty of information about the card coming up later awesome. in the show. Look at that. Cool. Thanks so much. All right, thank Kevin. You, Kevin. Thank you. Alrighty, Chipper. So this is the time where we let the folks on social media have a turn asking some questions. So if you guys are watching, sure that you follow Fanatics on Instagram so you can keep an eye out for our stories because there you can submit your best questions to each of our guests and have a chance like this to get it read live on air. So Chipper, first we have a question from Chris. Hi, Chipper. My name is Chris Simpson. I'm in Atlanta and, and a huge Braves fan, and it's an honor to be able to ask a question of you today. Also a fan cash rewards card holder. So thanks to Fanatics for this opportunity. Um, we're about the same age, and I'm sure we had some of the same baseball heroes growing up. Uh, this past year has just been so impactful from the great Braves we've lost, Hank Aaron, Phil Necro, but also the incredible number of Hall of Famers and other great players that we've lost. Um, I know you've known some of these men personally, but just curious your thoughts, you know, just as a baseball fan of, of this past year. Well, it's been a, a, a terrible go for the Hall of Famers and especially, you know, our little corner of, of the Hall of Fame with Don Sutton, Phil Necro and, and Hank Aaron. It's just uh, it's been a, a rough go for, for Braves country and very sad. I, I remember Don Sutton told me, you know, with five or six years left in my career. He looked me dead in the eye, grabbed me by both cheeks and looked me dead in the eye and said, you're going to be a Hall of Famer. Don't worry about it. Just go play, you know, and and just all of my interactions with those guys just came flooding back. There were some uh, that some Hall of Famers that passed away that I haven't gotten to see in my first couple of years of going to Cooperstown, haven't gotten to um, you know, engage with them, but, uh, you know, the, the Tom Seavers, the, the Bob Gibsons, Joe Morgan was a wonderful man. Um, just, just a tough year, you know, and, but it's been a tough year for everybody, you know, it, going through, um, this pandemic, uh, I, I'd be hard pressed to find anybody who hasn't been affected by it and, you know, some shape or form and, and the hall of fame is 
certainly uh, one of those. It's unfortunate that we're not going to get to go to Cooperstown again this year because I feel like with everyone we lost, it would have been a great uh, time to be able to get up there, reunite, and pay tribute to our brothers. Well, I know you're going to hold on to all the memories you do have with a lot of those guys even harder. And then whenever you guys get back up to Cooperstown, I'm sure it'll be very special, even more special than it usually is. Yeah. Um, so now we have a question from Bobby Jones from YouTube. I think you're going to like this one because we really haven't breached this topic yet today, Chipper. He says it would be awesome to be featured on the show. And here he is. And he wants to know what your favorite state to hunt in for big bucks. <laughs> Uh, well, as I'm repping my, mm -hmm. my major league bow hunter sweatshirt, um, you know, that's a great question. I get asked that all the time on social media. I would have to say I, I can't pinpoint one. There are two states that I really enjoy hunting. Um, we have the most success in the great state of Kansas, um, <laughs> myself and mama went out to Kansas and, and she killed with, she killed with her bow this year out in Kansas. I would have to say if there's one other one that rivals Kansas, it would be Iowa. Absolutely love going up there and hunting all those cornfields and whatnot. And you never know if, uh, what's going to come around the corner, uh, in the great state of Iowa. So those are, those are probably my two favorite states to hunt in. Kansas and Iowa, man, you got a dream girl in Taylor. That girl can do it all. Okay. So uh, those are our social media questions. So thank you so much for submitting them. And we are going to be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor. Introducing the fan cash rewards credit card by fanatics. Earn 6% fan cash. When you shop with your card on fanatics.com with exclusive cardholder perks and six months, special financing on purchases of $150 or more text now to apply or go to fanatics.com. So again, tonight's show is brought to you by the Fan Cash Rewards Card by Fanatics. And for more information, exclusive perks and benefits of being a card holder, you can head on over to fanatics.com or text fanatics to 94323 to apply now. All righty. So Chipper, this is a really fun part of the show. We're about to hit you with some rapid fire questions and the only rules, I don't make the rules, I just follow them. You got to reply to the questions with the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. 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 You kind of alluded to this one earlier, but batting left or right? Right. Ooh, favorite clubhouse food? Egg salad. <laughs> Sunflower seeds or bubble gum? <laughs> Sunflower seeds, more healthy. There you go. Favorite family activity? Ooh, movie night with pizza. Fulton or Turner? Turner. All time funniest teammate. I'll give you a hint. Okay. You want it? Yeah. You sound like you from <laughs> London, baby. Peter Moylan, baby. Peter Moylan. No, he'll Peter love Moylan. that. Peter <laughs> Moylan. I saw y'all's little bit the other day. That was oh. hilarious. Well, I love that. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah. Player that reminds you of you. Ooh, off the top of my head. Uh, Corey Seager. Okay. Go to deer stand snack. Deer jerky. Oh, <laughs> and what <laughs> song would be your walk-up song today? Uh, you know me, I'm loyal to a fault. I'm loyal to the Braves. I'm loyal to crazy train. It's, uh, it, it's the one song that, uh, you know, that those first two words all aboard and everybody knows who's coming to the plate. I wouldn't want it any other way. Instant goosebumps when that song comes on, no matter where you are. Well, that's going to be the end of tonight's show. So we want to thank our viewers and Chipper, you crushed this, man. We had a great time oh, with you. you. So thank, thank you, you so much. It. And uh, Chipper, I'm going to give you the floor if you want to say anything to anybody watching. Well, I just want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in today. It's been a blast. I'm going to get back to signing what looks like about a half a million autographs here behind, <laughs> behind the camera. But uh, just thank you for everybody. Thanks to Braves Country. Uh, looking forward to the start of the season starting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, make sure to tune in and uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, all of Braves Country in full force down at, uh, at Truist Park. As the whole, as we get the whole stadium filled up, so go Braves! Well, I will be right in the world again, seeing you back in that dugout. So thank you again <laughs> so much for your time today, Chipper. 
All right, Kels, take it easy. So we're not done with Fanatics Live for the day. You can catch us again at 5 p.m. We're going to go live with former New York Giants quarterback and two-time Super Bowl champion, Mr. Eli Manning. So that is for sure going to be a fun show with a lot of great football stories. So you do not want to miss that. Now to go watch our previous shows and to learn more on how to get involved, you can head on over to fanatics.com slash live. As always, stay safe and goodbye.